Hey guys, JoeBiz34 here, back again with another Hot Toys figure review, and this is a, a big boy right here, uh, Ed209, uh, the re-release, which is the newer version that just came out, and is significantly improved from the original, uh, which I do own as well. Um, I'm not going to get ultra, ultra specific on all the features, I mean, I'll touch on the main things, but I know that there's been a lot of, uh, a plethora of reviews already, uh, that, you know, people that really went over, like, what this figure can do and how it can articulate, and to be honest with you, the first negative, I would say, is the instructions. I mean, they give you instructions right there, and I do suggest reading them. Um, one thing I'm going to point out, though, for the remote stuff, it says in the instructions that the batteries are double A. But in reality, it's AAA. So I don't know what happened there. <laughs> and uh, when I opened it in the store, uh, and that's Matt uh, from Unmasked Collectibles that I usually get my figures from when it's like these type of, this type of stuff. Um, you know, he asked me what batteries, and I saw in the compartment it said AAA, and he had double A's that he was going to lend me to kind of test it in the store, uh, but they didn't fit. When I came home, I second-guessed myself because the instruction said to put double A's in. Um, but when I opened the compartment again, I realized why I knew it was AAA because it obviously doesn't fit and it says AAA in the battery compartment, which is, by the way, right back uh, on the head area back here. Uh, so you just unscrew it and you put the, the three AAAs in and off you go. There is an on-off button here, okay? This one does make sounds, so when you flick it, you will, oh, I don't know if I, I think I'd had it on already, so I'm going to turn it on now. All right, so that's cool. I wish it would have lasted a little longer, a little short, but then you have this uh, nameplate here, which is great for display, okay, but it also serves as a remote. Now, this thing is kind of a mixed bag for me, and I'll tell you why. Um, you know, the sound, the voice stuff and the electronics is cool. It's a nice gimmick, but again, you know, that's not really why we collect. It's more of uh, the details and the look of the figure itself, which is, by the way, out of, you know, out of five stars here, I would score this probably uh, a three and a half with some minor gripes, which I'll get into. But it's a beautiful figure, and it's definitely an improvement over the original, okay? Is it worth a rebuy if you have the original? Well, it was for me, and I'm a diehard Robocop fan. But if, you know, if you're happy with the first one and you have it in pretty good shape, you know, I don't know. Um, but there is enough here to justify upgrading, and I'll, I'll explain. So anyway, this is the remote that also has the on-off button here. Okay, uh, and when it is, that's the off and that's the on. So when it is on, um, it acts as a remote control. And the, the letter B and the O, <laughs> B-O, which is funny, which I think others have made fun of as well, uh, is what you press to make them talk. See, but as you can see, it doesn't always work. But there you go. It's acting a lot better now. It's behaving because it knows I'm filming him. <laughs> He's showing off. Now, there is something a little off with the voice, and I've heard others complain about it, and I'd have to agree. Like, the way he says 15 seconds, like, 15 seconds. Like, I don't know. There, there is something different. I don't think it's the actual voice. However, you know, is it off enough that it really bothers me? No. I mean, I think it's accurate enough uh, that, you know, I'm still pretty happy with it. See? Awesome. Now the sound effects are right from the movie, you could tell. Uh, but when he talks, you know, and I don't know, and, 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 and obviously, I'm, I don't want to make assumptions, but I'm curious to know if somebody from China, since Hot Toys is based in China, uh, because even with the distorted, low, demon-like sounding voice, uh, which is very menacing uh, sounding, but you could, it kind of sounds like there's a little bit of an accent there when he's talking in English, and I think that's what's distorting the voice, and I'm wondering if it's somebody where Hot Toys was made in China, or somebody in China that did the voice, spoke English, but maybe that little bit of broken English accent maybe, you know, was in there. Because, that, that, you know, otherwise I don't really, I can't really put my finger on why it sounds slightly off. But again, 
it's just nitpicking. I mean, overall, it's awesome. And I really didn't buy it mainly just for the voice. I mean, I think that's just the cherry on top. And it sounds close enough that he still sounds cool. It still, you know, sounds, you know, it still reads Ed 209 for my taste. So I'm cool with it. Now, um, I've heard one reviewer say that this is a little off because it's supposed to be deeper in, and I agree, but at the same time, I think it's cool, and the fact that it is kind of sticking further out uh, adds, you know, basically allows to, you know, to show off the detail. You could see the grid, you could see the wiring, and maybe that's why they did it so, you know, the, the detail stands out. And again, when you look at it, you know, just in a pose, you know, that's Ed 209. You know, it doesn't distort the overall look of the figure. Um, this is really cool. They give you the two arms that you attach. Now, this figure comes in pieces, so the box is huge. There's the shipper for it that actually has a handle to carry it, and then it has the inserts in here. It comes apart. You have to put the legs and the arms on together. So I would say, read the instructions, take your time, uh, maybe even use a hair dryer on the ball joints just to loosen up a bit so it goes in a little easier, and just make sure you don't accidentally snap or break anything. But from what I've seen playing around with him, uh, he's pretty flexible. He's pretty durable. I mean, he could take a little force without worrying about breaking or snapping anything. Um, now, on this cannon, you know, you get the missiles that you have to insert. Um, and in order for it to, to successfully, it does rotate. So you can, like, hide them. And you could push this little piece. Now, this piece comes off pretty easily. You have to snap that on. But it come, it does fall off, so be careful with that. But, you know, obviously, there it is. You know, you can put it there. You can put it a little up, up further. All right, and then when it's when you're ready to use, if you want to pose them with the missiles coming out, you push it forward and you push that up, uh, and there the missiles expose, which simulates the scene when he was shooting him at RoboCop in the uh, the office building of uh, OCP. So uh, very detailed again, showing wires, a lot more detailing than the old Ed 209, um, and a lot more articulation. I mean, those are two benefits right there. Uh, to this one versus the first one. And again, I'm not the first to say that. The paint job, so I would say the three major things is the paint job. This one has a much more accurate uh, color scheme. Uh, this looks more true to the on-screen color of Ed 209. The older one has more of a greenish bluish tint to it, a darker, almost battle damage kind of look. Um, and I'm not sure because I think that came out when they were doing Robocop 3 with the jetpack figure back when. And they might have had Robocop 3 in mind when they made that first Ed 209. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think Ed 209, when he appears briefly in the beginning of Robocop 3. Um, and I, it could just be the lighting. I could be completely wrong. But I do remember thinking when I see the film that he looks a little darker in that movie. He looks a little more bluer. So maybe when they made the first Ed 209, they were kind of following that color scheme because they were releasing it around the same time or that era when they were doing Robocop 3 and the Jetpack Robocop. So it's possible that that was their mindset. Or it just could be that they, you know, they didn't get it totally right and they improved it. But either way, this one completely represents the color. So the color is much more accurate to the original Robocop from Part 1. And... Briefly, when you see him kind of malfunctioning in part two and what have you. Um, and I guess part three as well. I mean, I don't know if it was just, like I said, because it was taking place at night. Um, so the color scheme, the paint job is better. The detailing and the decals are much more uh, detailed. Although I know maybe not 100% accurate, but they're still cool. Like these little warning labels and stuff. And, you know, whether they you know were actually there or not in the movie or not totally accurate, I still think it's cool as hell. <laughs> And I like how they have by the bolts here, you can see like these little bit of like grease or oil stains or like stuff dripping out of the bolts and stuff, which is kind of a nice little added touch. Maybe not necessary. The chrome and the metal on it is, is so fantastically done. It's so realistic looking. Uh, it really looks like real metal. It really does look like real robotic parts. Um, and as a bonus, they do give you the battle damage arm, okay, which is right here. Um, and it's cool because I think in the original Ed 209, I have the non-battle damaged old one, but they actually sold two different ones, so you had to kind of make a choice. Where this, you get both looks. Um, so that's cool if you want to mimic the scene where he's got damaged, you know, from Robocop shooting him with his own arm, with this arm, and then having the missiles ready for, to fire at him. Um, or I, 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 in this case so far, think I like the, uh, the clean look. But it's still a cool prop to have like on the side, or maybe when the new Robocop comes out, it'd be nice to display it like next to him, you know, since he was the one that did the damage. So that's a cool prop. And the remote control also acts as a nameplate, so it makes a kind of a cool display to kind of keep it in front of Ed 209. Um, and you know, the other strange thing is that sometimes it you could be right next to this thing and you click it and it works, sometimes not. And literally, I went into the living room before and I just happened to click it and he started to talk. So the range on this thing is very unpredictable. Uh, but anyway, once again, it's cool. It's a cool little feature, little add-on. So 
again, the color scheme, the detailing and the, and the decals and all the little wires and everything that you see uh, and the metal chrome, like I said, everything is improved off the old figure. Um, the articulation, I would say, is the third most improved part of this figure. You can move the toes of the feet, like others have said, I mean, have shown, okay, up and down. It's got like a spring type feel to it. I have him more, uh, if you notice, you can flex the legs. You can make the legs go up and down, which I wasn't sure because it's it, it's not clear in the instructions. And that's my complaint. The instructions are a little vague on exactly, like it shows you arrows and it shows you what you can move, but it doesn't really get into detail how. And basically, you have to just give some force and, you know, pull it up and down. And um, it's, it's cool, but it's a little scary because you feel like you're going to break it. So I wouldn't recommend... Uh, moving it up and down too often. I would say try to get them in a position that you, you like to display them in because ultimately this is not really a toy you're going to be playing with all the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, leave it like that, you know. And then, and then, like, I prefer him to kind of be a little higher up. I like him in the more upright, menacing pose like he's about to attack, okay, like when you see him spring up. So he's a little taller than what he came out of the box, like with the legs, as you can see here. Okay, but like I said, you can push these down and these flaps kind of get move in and out to kind of get out of the way of you doing that. So it allows you the freedom to do that. Um, so you might want to, like, like others have mentioned, you might want to keep them a little open so that you can move the legs up and down without worrying about something, you know, cracking or giving. Um, so you can move the legs, you know, this way and that way and you can move these all around. And, and, and like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time in that because this is not information that you guys don't already know if you haven't, you know, unless this is the first review you're watching, but uh, I always, even if I'm late to the game, and a lot of times we don't get things first, so we don't, I don't get a crack at doing a review when the figure first comes out, but um, I did just pick this up yesterday from Matt from Unmasked Collectibles, and I'll put his information uh, on the screen, because again, I have his card, but I don't have it here at the moment, so I'll just, I'll just put it on the screen as I'm editing this video, so you can see uh, how to get in touch with him, so I got it from him locally, so I didn't have to, uh, pay as much on, you know, with shipping costs and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, again, uh, I think, you know, basically the look of the figure, like even the dome still has that rubbery feel. And there was some concern. That's another thing I wanted to bring up because I noticed when I opened the figure that there was like a little bit of a line here. And I wasn't sure if it was damaged or not. And I talked to Matt about it and he took pictures of it just in case. But, and you can't even really see it in this camera. It's very, like, there you go. If you, here, there's an angle. So it almost looks like a scratch. And I wasn't sure if it was a, um, a defect or not. But apparently others have noticed the same thing. And Matt said that other, you know, Ed 209s that he's seen in the store, I guess, have the same thing in the same place. Um, but he says if he, if he notices otherwise, he'll let me know. Because then he could, he could, you know, work with Sideshow if it was a defect. But I don't think it is because a lot of people have said they've seen the same thing. And I think this is just where maybe to fix the cracking of the rubber problem that the first Ed 209 had... Um, you know, we were thinking that maybe they put this together in pieces and this might be like an extra piece that they kind of like hot glued or like glued together to kind of close it off and maybe it gives more flexibility. Maybe it's, it, maybe it gives the, uh, the dome more, uh, you know, you know, mounts it better so that it doesn't end up like tearing or cracking or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know if this is what they did originally, you know, uh, I think originally it was all one piece and it still comes off as that except for that line. Um, and again, it's not a big deal because you can only see it at certain angles. See, like if you go there, you don't even know it's there. And if you go a little this way, you can see it. Um, and it's not on this side. So that might be the only piece that was like an add-on piece that they connected it to in order to finish it. And again, it might have something to do with correcting uh, the problem with the, with the rubber dome originally. And the only other complaint I would say I have is that if you zoom in here, I don't know if you could see, but... There's a little, you know, there is a little bit of a, a roughness to where the dome connects to the figure. Uh, you could see, like, here where maybe there's, like, glue or stuff. Um, and it, it kind of, like, kind of bleeds over a little bit onto the, you know, to the rim. And it kind of can come off as looking like scratches, but it really isn't. Uh, again, not a huge deal, and it's only something that you see really up close. But overall, again, I'm very happy with this figure. I'm glad I bought it. Um, I would say that the mold and the actual, the whole figure as a whole, is really the same thing from the old Robocop. The only difference is, is that they improved the articulation and made pieces move in a lot more places. They improved the paint job and the detailing tremendously. Um, and they've added the, uh, the electronics, the gimmick stuff, okay, which is cool.
Now, this is probably double the price that the original ED209 cost back when, but you get more with it. You, get, you do get an improved figure or prop or whatever you want to call it uh, with, uh, like, in, things are, so again, you know, does it justify uh, upgrading? I don't know. And by the way, I've said this before in other videos, I have the older ED209. Uh, it's not right here with me. Uh, I would have done it side by side, but I don't have it in my possession uh, at this very moment. But um, I do still have it for sale, and I'm, I'm selling it for like 250 bucks. And if you're local or if you're in the U.S., I mean, maybe I could work with you. We could even do it cheaper. Like, if you just want an ED-209 and you don't care about the gimmicky stuff or... Because the old one is still very good. I mean, overall, it still has a great presence to it. And other than the slight differences with the paint job and the detailing, it's still a very nice display. And if, you're, if you want to save some money... Because uh, you're not going to find any of these for 200 bucks or 250 for a while, uh, unless it was used and beat up. And sometimes the old ones are, are if they're still mint in the box, they still may command a, a higher price too. Mine is used. It's got it's got a little bit of the cracks in the dome, but nothing to write home about. And it never got any worse. I repaired some of it, and it never it never uh, spread beyond that. And um, Again, it doesn't have a box, like the original box. I bought it that way. I bought it secondhand in order to save money originally because they were skyrocketing on eBay. So, um, like I said, if you want to get an ED-209 and you don't care as much about whether it's the new or the old version and you want to save some bucks, you know, here's a chance to grab one, you know, and it, it, it looks, it's got a commanding presence regardless if it's this one or this new one. But anyway, as far as purchasing this one, if you're a big RoboCop fan, if you're planning on getting the new RoboCop that's coming out, the diecast RoboCop that's coming out soon, um, and, you know, you like the voice gimmick and you like the improvements, I would say, you know, especially if you could sell or get rid of your old one, or just keep both of them, because that's what I may end up doing if I get stuck with the old one. Um, maybe I'll try to convert it and maybe put this arm in the old one. Maybe I could incorporate it somehow and make that the battle damage one. So, I mean, I have other options. You know, they, the, my rule of thumb in collecting is always collect things you don't mind getting stuck with. So, if I'm stuck with two Ed 209s, Oh, well, you know, life could be worse. <laughs> but uh, anyway, just hit me up if you uh, are interested in that other one. And uh, I have shown it in earlier videos. I don't remember exactly, but if you look uh, a few videos back on my channel, you'll see uh, the old ED-209. And plus, you know, you can see pictures of the old one on the internet, whether it's stock or whatever, um, to get an idea. Uh, and, and, of course, if you contact me, I can, I can arrange to get pictures sent to you if you want pictures of the actual product. Okay, but in the meantime... That's Hot Toys RoboCop. Uh, I would say that with all the detailing and everything else, this figure definitely, definitely is top, top, top shelf quality. quality. That's right. That's right. Top shelf quality. This is top shelf quality. And like I said, nothing could ever be perfect or 100% accurate, but this is as close as you get. And, um, you know, if you like it in scale with 1 6, and, you know, you don't mind the little nitpicks that people are saying. I would say this is definitely a home run because you know, regardless of anything, when the thing is just sitting there, it's got a it's got a menacing, commanding presence, and you know it's awesome. Uh, and I'm I'm happy, you know. And I never thought years ago when I saw the original RoboCop in theaters. By the way, I'm dating myself again. You know, I never thought the day would come that I'd be looking at this and have such an awesome prop, uh, you know, or, or replica or figure, whatever you want to call it. Uh, staring back at me in my home. So I'm very pleased, and uh, he is a cool. So, so pick him up if you can, all right? Till next time, guys. Peace out.